what time? Tomorrow. The place? A hostile nation. The weapons? Intercontinental range ballistic missiles in hardened sites. we face. But we are not asleep. Night and day, our satellites and radars are on guard. The Midas satellite detects hostile missiles shortly after launch and relays the information through a ground station to alert BMUs, NORAD, and the Aerospace Defense Forces of the Free World. BMUs, the ballistic missile early warning system tracks the hostiles. When they have attained sufficient altitude, BMUs identifies the launch and impact areas. And our early warning radars detect hostile aircraft. Their intelligence is sent to the North American Air Defense Command, the Strategic Air Command, and the Pentagon by landline, radio, and communication satellites, transmitting information that the unknown missiles are hostile. Orders go out to launch our striking force of supersonic bombers, intercontinental and air-launched ballistic missiles, and to defend ourselves with supersonic interceptors missiles and anti-missile missiles. the attack you've just seen depicted never happened. But the Air Force is prepared for just such an eventuality. The people, most of the equipment, and the technical know-how are already in being. Now, this all became especially clear to me during a recent tour of reserve duty in the Pentagon. While there, I had a unique opportunity to review the communications capability that now exists within the Air Force, a capability which forms a major and an integral part of the overall defense communication system. As an old bomber pilot who has had to rely on communications many times, I, I was very impressed with the important story of aerospace communications, a story which never really has been told. And that's why I'm here today, to help pass on this fascinating story as seen through the eyes of a reserve officer, and to show you that only through communications is effective command and control possible. Now, to begin with, here are the major elements of the network that provides this nation with up to 15 minutes of warning. There's the Dew Line, the Mid-Canada Line, and the Pine Tree Line to warn of hostile aircraft. BMUs, the Ballistic Missile Early Warning System in Alaska, Greenland, and Great Britain. Plus, in the near future, additional minutes of warning from the detection satellite known as MIDAS. These are augmented by radar-equipped picket ships and radar early warning aircraft. All of them feed intelligence of various kinds into NORAD, the North American Air Defense Command. For the continental United States, our most advanced system to control the air battle against the manned bomber is SAGE, semi-automatic ground environment, which evaluates all information electronically and displays it at various locations for the guidance of our interceptors and missiles. 
Communications provide the vital link between the commander and the complex weapon systems he employs. Now, let me show you just how vast the Air Force communication system is. Now, these are the worldwide Air Force installations that must be linked together by the Air Force communication service. To do this tremendous job, the communication service operates AIRCOM, the USAF Aerospace Communications Complex, which is a component part of the defense communication system. Now here are some of the major networks which comprise that complex. Air Communications Net for administrative operations, Combat Logistics Net for logistical support, Weather Net for dissemination of weather data, Air Operations Net for control of air traffic, and the Strategic Air Command Alerting Net. You know, a SAC commander once said, without communications, the only thing I can command is my desk. And that's not a very lethal weapon. And he was right. But with communications, with communications, a vast amount of command and control is possible, which you'll see in a moment. But now, now let's, uh, let's begin with something basic. We use many forms of communication, including the ordinary pneumatic tube and the teletype that sends a message thousands of miles by cutting a perforated tape and transmitting it to our automatic relay system. By this means, the same message may be transmitted as many times and to as many locations as desired. Now here's something a little more spectacular. This is quite a piece of equipment. This is long range radio used for command of airborne forces. I uh, get this thing fired up. It's in the 14 megacycle band. There. Now I'm going to talk to the pilot of a SAC B-58 flying at 50,000 feet above the Mediterranean. Ready? Jolly Jack, this is Green Tree Alpha. Jolly Jack, this is Green Tree Alpha. Over. Green Tree Alpha, this is Jolly Jack. Over. Roger, Jolly Jack. Uh, Green Tree Alpha for comm check. You're five by five here. Over. Loud and clear here. Roger, thank you, Jolly Jack. Green Tree Alpha out. This. And instantaneous communications from a desk just like this to any Air Force aircraft anywhere in the world. It's just that simple. It's just that simple with our global communication system. And now, let's take a look at closed circuit television. Here's up to the minute global weather as shown on the world weather map at Weather Central. The Combat Operations Center at Headquarters North American Air Defense Command. And here's the command post at Strategic Air Command Headquarters. Now the equipment you've seen, the television, radio, telephone and intercom, and others that you may not have seen, weather facsimile, data computers, voice recorders, telemetry, data link, communications rockets, undersea cables, and high-powered radio antennas. All of these and many more are operating 24 hours a day as a part of our deterrent force. Now, in just a moment, at exactly 1800 hours Zulu time, you'll see how all the members of the Air Force Communications Electronics Team would work together as a unit if a full-scale alert were to take place. To demonstrate this, we will assume in this instance that only a few people in the top echelons know that this alert is actually a test exercise. To the rest of the people you see here, what is about to happen could be the real thing. 
the beginning of a life and death struggle between our country and a hostile force. 1,800 hours. The first sign of trouble shows at the NORAD Combat Operations Center on the missile display panel from the Midas satellite. Two missiles have been fired from the North Pacific and two more from the North Atlantic. Sir, there are four missile launches shown in our Midas screen with impact areas unknown. Okay, uh, we'll assemble the battle staff, implement coca color, and I'll call the commander in chief. Okay. The ballistic missile early warning system is notified. BMUs will soon be able to supply additional intelligence, including the predicted areas of impact. Interconnecting displays keep each command informed of the situation. The displays at NORAD and SAC will show what is being received by Midas, the early warning satellite, and BMUs, the ballistic missile early warning system. At 1801, a new threat appears on the display board at NORAD. Dew line radars are picking up unknowns along the northern borders of America. High powered radars are picking up aircraft penetrating our perimeter defenses. Early warning information is relayed to NORAD Combat Operations Center where it is noted by all personnel, including civil defense and the SAC liaison group. The threat is now great enough to warrant an increase in our alert status. In a few seconds, the Commander-in-Chief of the North American Air Defense Command, the Commander-in-Chief of the Strategic Air Command, and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff are in conference. General, we picked up four unknown missiles from the North Pacific and North Atlantic. Unknown aircraft are penetrating into the north of Canada and Alaska. I've just talked to the Canadian Chief of Staff Committee, and we feel the situation is serious enough to warrant going into maximum alert. All right, go to maximum alert and stand by for further directives. SAC acknowledges and will take the necessary action. These few words set in motion a worldwide alert with command and control exercised through global communications. The Strategic Air Command Senior Controller then alerts all SAC units throughout the world. This is Bandbox. All stations prepare to copy. The code words are followed by a pause, during which the warning system alerts all SAC bases. Foxtrot 24. Delta. 09. Two, six. Zero, four, zero, five. Tango. Mohawk X-ray. Authentication is Peter 7. I repeat. And SAC crews everywhere immediately react. Airborne Commander acknowledges. The coded alert is heard over radio facilities of the Early Warning Network. Ground to air radio. Circuits are tested to ensure continuity of operation. Communications rockets are prepared. Strategic Air Command is now on alert status. Communications will assume battle staff configuration. The underground has now been sealed. In the SAC communication center, the alert warns personnel to cease transmission of all but essential traffic. At the Air Force command post in the Pentagon, 
simultaneously with the red phone announcement, the senior operations officer will alert commanders throughout the world. Stand by, sir, for an emergency conference. I repeat, stand by for an emergency conference. This is the Air Force Command Post. Authentication is earthquake. Please acknowledge your presence in conference as your command is called. Commander in Chief Pacific. Sync Pack here. This is Sync Your. Sync Lant acknowledges. This is Sync Al. Sync Nav Your here. This is Sync Carib. Sync Norad acknowledges. Sync Sac acknowledges. This is blast off. Open your sealed instructions number 979. Each area commander then sets his forces in motion. 1806 hours. Fighters scramble from bases in Alaska, in Canada, and in the continental United States. Tactical missile units are alerted. Air defense missiles are ready. And if this were an actual alert, the Commander-in-Chief, NORAD, would institute a CONRAD alert. And the Civil Defense Group at NORAD headquarters would simultaneously declare an air raid warning and alert the civilian population. This is a Conrad alert. Normal broadcasting will be discontinued for an indefinite period. Civil defense information will be broadcast in most areas at 640 or 1240 on your regular radio receiver. Across the North American continent, all units are alerted for action. Hardened missile sites are opened. ICBMs are ready. An instantaneous logistic support is available to supply whatever may be needed in forward areas, plus weather information, firepower, and refueling capability. 1813 hours at the NORAD Combat Operations Center, an increasing number of unknowns appear on the display board. The radars at SAGE, the semi-automatic ground environment, show several penetrations, and fighter aircraft are guided toward the unknown invaders. The pilot is guided by Data Link, an automatic electronic guidance system. Eighteen fifteen hours. The unknown missiles are now being tracked by our ground electronic system. The impact points predicted by BMUs, South Atlantic and South Pacific, are posted on the missile display boards at NORAD and SAC. They are friendly, missiles fired as part of the exercise. But the aircraft are still unidentified, and they are more numerous than before. However, visual contact will soon be made by our interceptors. Have them in sight. Contrails at one five miles. At the same time, the SAC force is ready to strike in hostile territory if the alert proves to be an attack. Some of these aircraft will need fuel to retain their long strike capability. Bomber and tanker rendezvous points have been predetermined. Navigator from Boomer. Have them in sight. Roger, Boomer. Bring him in. Four ten. Up five. Bomber contact. Another example of command and control through communications. But until the unknowns are identified, no one can relax for an instant. The progress of the unknowns is closely followed. 18, 19 hours. The reports from interceptors to SAGE bring the first contact with the unknown aircraft. The unknown turns out to be one of our own B-58s, simulating a hostile. This is Red Bird Leader, unknown target.
target, as you said, B-58, tail number 07462. Unknown target, as you said, B-58, tail number 07462. Smokey 2, unknown target is tanker KC-135, tail number 905100. Roger, Redbird Lear, aircraft confirmed as friendly. Break, break. Roger, Smokey 2. Blackjack 3 and Skyway Lear. Aircraft all confirmed as friendly. Sage relays the information to NORAD as one by one the unknowns prove friendly. At NORAD, the display board shows a diminishing number of unknowns. Unknowns are proved friendly on the Pacific Coast, Atlantic Coast, over Canada, Newfoundland, and Alaska. 1845 hours, 45 minutes after the alert exercise began, the Air Force Command Post calls it off. This is the Air Force Command Post. Exercise blast off is terminated at 05 slash 1845 Zulu. Authentication is Baker 9. Commander in Chief advises, terminate your air defense emergency and notify all units. I repeat. Commander-in-Chief advises, terminate your air defense emergency and notify all units. NORAD now relays the cancellation to all air defense units. Interceptors are recalled to base. Defense missiles are returned to normal. The Civil Defense Liaison Group at NORAD takes action to cancel the civilian alert. At SAC headquarters, SAC aircraft are recalled and missiles are returned to normal. Freight train, freight train. This is Bandbox. Transfer to Blue Denim. Authentication is Hot Point Baker. Let's go home, boys. Overseas commands recall their tactical aircraft. Uh, Domino, Domino, this is Pembroke Control. All aircraft return to your bases. I repeat, Domino, Domino, this is Pembroke Control. All aircraft return to your bases. Blue Leader, Roger. The alert is over and the aircraft return to their bases. We have proved that we're ready to defend the country. We have shown that only through communications can we have positive command and control of our weapon systems. We have shown that communications are, in truth, the reins of command. Now, looking to the future, we'll see a continuing priority on satellite systems for warning and reconnaissance and communications they can make a great contribution to the overall national deterrent posture. But warning and reconnaissance systems are of little value without reliable communications and automatic data processing systems. Capable of analyzing and transmitting their intelligence to the people who command our aerospace forces. Frankly, what we're looking for in communications electronics are technological breakthroughs, not merely new improvements on old methods, but completely new methods that will take our messages instantaneously to any commander on Earth or in space. A system with even greater capacity, reliability, and survivability than is possible today, and with simpler, more direct routing all at greater savings in money and people. Developments now in progress will lead us to this new capability. Meanwhile, the Air Force's communications and electronic systems, the biggest, most responsive, and most complex in existence, will continue to support the defense posture of the free world. These systems admittedly are expensive, but we must have them, not only for command and control, but to buy time, to buy the precious minutes of warning which permit the launching of aircraft and missiles. For every few seconds of additional warning, 
it's possible for each base to launch additional aircraft and missiles. And as our weapon systems become even more sophisticated in speed and accuracy and destructive power, time plays an increasingly important role. As long as we can buy time with communications, we can stay ahead. When the life or death of a nation can be counted in minutes, then every second, every microsecond counts.